to the Great Detectives Old Time Radio. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham. Got a comment? Email me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Cast your vote for the show on Podcast Alley, podcastalley.greatdetectives.net. And uh, become a fan of the show on Facebook, facebook.greatdetectives.net. And we'll actually begin with a comment from Podcast Alley. A good... Uh, uh, observation by Bill, who says that he's a major fan of the podcast, especially Jeff Regan, Box 13, and Evan O'Brien era Johnny Dollar. Recently, I've added Let George Do It to my list of faves. The reason? Claire Brooks. Brooksy is often the voice of reason and an important element in the resolution of George's cases in a radio landscape littered with dim bulb girl assistants and sociopathic femme fatales. The smart, intrepid Miss Brooks is a rare woman indeed. Uh, and, you know, I think, I think you're right. There really is a very strong uh, team element in here that's different than most other uh, detective shows. Unlike, say, Dan and Susie or um, uh, Sam Spade and Effie, um, really a very solid working relationship uh, that's one of the real charms of the show. So good observation there. All right, well, we're going to get into today's episode in just a second. Usually at this point, we bring you a message about one of the uh, programs we have uh, at greatdetectives.net. However, I'm going to take a moment to let you know about something a little bit different without any uh, commercial implications for the show. I'm a uh, child sponsor through uh, Compassion International. And one thing that was emphasized to me in a recent uh, email... Uh, is that Compassion has a large number of children available for sponsorship over the age of 10. Uh, and it can be harder for a lot of the children to find uh, sponsorship just because we connect a lot easier with the younger kids. However, the older children still need help with, uh, with the basic necessities of life, with health and education, basic uh, uh, basic schooling. Uh, Compassion is a very widely uh, respected uh, organization. I wouldn't sponsor with, uh, with them if if they weren't. Uh, and I encourage you to go to Compassion.com, make a difference in the life of a child. Compassion.com. Well, let's get into today's episode of Let George Do It, The Little Man Who Was Everywhere. <laughs> Standard of California, on behalf of independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations throughout the West, invites you to Let George Do It. The Little Man Who Was Everywhere. Another adventure of George Valentine. Personal notice, danger is my stock and trade. If you can't handle it alone without getting hurt, you got a job for me, George Valentine. Write full details. <laughs> Dear Mr. Valentine, a man is trying to drive me mad, and it's very annoying. He's a little man with big glasses. I see him everywhere I go. What would you do if you kept seeing the same little man staring at you, sending you threatening notes? He has no right to do this to me. It's most inconsiderate. You must do something about it. does exist if he writes threatening notes. Uh-huh. Okay, Angel, I'm intrigued. Let's go and see about this little man who is or isn't there. I'm the executor of the Carnuke estate. Uh, that was Vivian's father. And it's probably a good idea that I'm here. What do you mean, Mr. Wilton? Oh, just to make sure you understand what Vivian says. Oh, what's the matter? Doesn't she speak English? <laughs> That's just it. Decidedly. She overspeaks it. Her father used to say Vivian has a grasshopper mind. The way she jumps... Hello, Mr. Mother, Pierre. It's about the only time I feel... <laughs> oh, Vivian. Uh... What? Oh. Oh, I didn't know you brought company with you, David. Anything about French food or Mr. Valentine? 
Drive me out of my mind. Harry Sterner? You mean you know who this man is? Oh, yes. Yes. Davis, show Mr. Valentine those notes. Uh, they used to come every day. Uh, just a few words scribbled on me. Uh -huh, I see. Vengeance shall be mine. You mean just that, George? Uh-huh. Here's another one. You shall perish in the flames of your own conscience. Did the thought of her keep you awake last night, too? And more in the same group. Say, who is this, Turner? Uh, you see, Mr. Valentine, the Yukon estate uh, consists almost entirely of uh, a number of apartment houses down in the old river flat section. Apartment houses? Isn't that giving those eyesores a rather fancy name, Mr. Wilton? Well, I admit they were built uh, quite a few years ago, but many people are satisfied to live in them. Uh, about Mr. Turner? Uh, some months ago, there was a regrettable fire in our place at 39 Morton Street. Unfortunately, Mrs. Turner was lost in it. Oh, how dreadful. Oh, now I'm beginning to see what this is all about. Well, of course, I, I'm terribly sorry for this poor man, Mr. Valentine. But why did he blame me? I had nothing to do with it. Miss Newcomer, did you ever show these notes to the police? Oh, yes, yes, and they spoke to him. He stopped sending the notes. But he goes right on popping up everywhere and just looking at me in that frightening way. Say, uh, come to think about it, uh, haven't there been several fires recently down in that section? That's the other side of this problem. After the one in 39 Morton Street, there have been three others, all in our building. Luckily, the damage wasn't too great. Sterner? We don't know, but uh, we'd like to. Oh, you must do something about that man, Mr. Valentine. Okay, okay. Now, this Sterner, where can I find him? Uh, the poor fellow keeps sneaking back into the house at 39 so he can stay in the apartment he had with his wife. The building is boarded up, but he gets in and out. <laughs> we overlook it. You must force this man to realize how unhappy he's making me, Mr. Valentine. Oh, I'm sure he realizes that, Miss Newcomer. I'm just wondering how unhappy he plans to make you. <laughs> I don't care who you are. How did you get in here? Look, what I want to know, Sterner, is how do you live in this place? No lights, the windows all boarded and up. And the stench of burnt wood. And that's what I like most. It doesn't let me forget what happened. Not for a moment. Why do you torture yourself like this, friend? It can't do any good. I look around this burned-out tenement and I think of my wife. And when I think of Irene... I think of Miss Newcomer. Okay, I'll take and it. And then I find out where she is and I go there. And I stand just looking at her. She's beginning to crack under it, isn't she? Why don't you face it, Sterner? Miss Newcomer isn't going to let this go on. Oh, what can she do? The streets are free. That's one thing her money can't change. Look, if you carry this thing too far, a couple of guys in white jackets are going to suggest a pad itself for you. Is it insane to want to teach a woman some respect for human life? All her buildings are fire traps. She knows that. But still, she doesn't do anything about it. Now, look, I can understand how you I feel, mean... but... I mean... Irene, she didn't have to die. That fire didn't have to sweep through here like it did. It was plain murder. You don't let a known murderer get away with it, do you? Those other fires in the Newcomer buildings, is that part of your little campaign, The police too? weren't able to prove anything. Oh, yes. Since the last one, they've been following me. Oh, yes, I know. Now, you listen you to me, You go sir. back to Miss Newcomer and tell her she can go on wondering what I'm going to do next. And there's nothing you can do about it, Mr. Valentine. Miss Brooks, if it has to do with fires, the arson squad takes care of it. Homicide keeps me busy. So you can tell Valentine I've got a perfectly good excuse to stay off his merry-go-round this time. Oh, but you were sweet enough to go to all the trouble to get the information George wants. Eh? Well... Yes. But you can tell him if it took me more than five minutes, I wouldn't have. Information, please? Yeah. Tell him Sterner used to be your watchmaker till he got arthritis. Couldn't handle the tools after a while. Oh, what does he do now? Now he's a watchman in one of the loft buildings in River Flats. Now, about those fires... Oh, it's hard to believe any man would deliberately set fire to a crowded tenement. The arson boys say they were definitely the work of a pyromaniac, a mm. firebug. Oh. The jobs were too sloppy to be professional. 
Well, and that seems to point to Sterner. Okay, if Sterner's playing with matches, they're going to nail him. And if he keeps making faces at Miss Newcomer, he's going to end up in the booby hat. Yeah. Yep, at long last, a nice, simple job for our friend. Except for one thing. Well, I think I know what you mean. Yeah. Nothing Valentine's in the middle of ever stays simple. <laughs> yes, sir, Mr. Valentine, yours truly, Edward Beasley, selling insurance for almost every company in the world, covering any risk except your chances of surviving an atom bomb. <laughs> <laughs> ah, that's a very cheerful thing. Uh, we haven't got our statistics ready on that yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. To come to the point, Beasley. Uh, yes? I understand you wrote the fire insurance and the newcomer properties. Yeah, that's right. Now tell me. Would the amount of the insurance tempt someone to put the torch to them one by one? Well, as a matter of fact, it's quite a sizable amount. Of... Hey, wait a minute. Are you implying that Miss Newcomer... Oh, would... I just have an inquisitive nature, that's all. But that's exactly what you are implying. If those fires weren't started by some crazy firebug, as everybody knows they were, it would have to be done by someone who stands to profit. Well, just a thought. There are times when all of us can use some ready cash. Now, look, young man. You're barking up the wrong tree. If you ask me, this Sterner fellow's at the bottom of all this. I don't happen to believe that. Uh, what? Oh, I'll admit he has a screw loose because of what happened to his wife. But that's the very reason he's not a firebug. Well, that's the darndest reasoning I've ever heard. Sterner's had too much tragedy in his life. He wouldn't risk letting the same thing happen to a lot of innocent people. Well, there may be something to that. Uh, have you told your clients about the way you feel, Valentine? Seems to me that would be only ethical. I'm going to do that little thing right now, Beasley. Then I'm going to see Sterner again. In effect, uh, you're putting me and Miss Newcomer under suspicion. I only know the way I feel. Sterner didn't set those fires, and they weren't started by any wild-eyed pyromaniac either. There's a purpose and a reason behind them. So now, what do you want me to do? If I told you to get off the case, Valentine, I'd only be admitting that there's something wrong. So I want you to stick with it. I believe I speak for Miss Newcomer, too. Okay. I still think you'll find that Sterner is your man. But the important thing is to stop him from hounding Vivian. She may not sound it, but she's a thoroughly frightened woman. Indeed, on the verge of a breakdown. Okay, I'll do what I can. I just thought you'd better know how things stand before I go to work on Sterner again. A very frank young man. Oh, oh, Vivian. I just wanted to tell you, I think you made an admirable choice in Valentine. He was just here. He said he doesn't believe Stan had anything to do with those fires. And naturally, I told him to go right ahead. I think everything will be all right. <laughs> Probably darker places than this, but I can't think of any, George. Yeah, but see, I should have remembered to bring a flash. Wait a minute, I'll add another match. Mm. Yeah, we're almost up to the top floor now. You know, George, I could have sworn I heard someone downstairs in the hall. Oh, probably just plaster falling off the ceiling. I can't imagine anyone living here. You can imagine Sterner doing it. Ouch! Fire. Time up for another match, Angel. By all means, let there be light. Well, that's the door just ahead. You know, it's very interesting what Riley had to say about Sterner. I thought it was strange that a man as well-spoken as he should be living down in this section. Hey, Sterner, this is Valentine. Look, I got a few things to tell you. Come on, open up. Might be he isn't home, if you can call this home. Yeah, I guess you're right. Well, we just have to wait for him. Oh, no, not up here we won't. I have a sudden desire to fill my lungs with good fresh air. All right. <laughs> I think we can find our way down without this match. Now, you stay right behind me, Angel. You don't have to worry about that. George? Huh? Can cats really see in the dark? Oh, you'd better stay away from this newcomer. You're beginning to sound like her. Oh, I don't know. 
cat from door to door. Brooks, George! 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 Turn to tonight's adventure, George Valentine, in just a moment. Meanwhile, a word about playing it safe. When you shop for meat, you're confident of quality because you know you're protected by health department regulations. But how can you be sure of quality when you're buying a battery for your car? The National Society of Automotive Engineers established protection for you when it established three rigid battery tests. Atlas batteries excel in all three of these tests required by the Society. Next time you look at an Atlas battery, notice the certified capacities embossed on the back panel, which also shows the number of plates in it. So for a sure starting battery with greater capacity through a longer service period, make sure it's an Atlas battery. You can get one at any standard station or independent Chevron gas station. Certified Atlas batteries and expert battery service are two reasons why independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations say and mean... We'll take better care of your car. And now, back to tonight's adventure of George Valentine. Well, a slightly pixelated lady complains that a man has been deliberately driving her out of her mind. The man? You find a pathetic, grief-stricken husband who's lost his wife in a tenement fire. Like George Valentine, you can't believe he's also a half-demented firebug, as everyone else suspects. So along with Brooksy, you find yourself on the darkened stairs of a boarded-up tenement. Suddenly, something sends both of you hurtling down to the landing below. And then... Are you sure you're all right, George? Oh, oh, oh yeah, yeah, just great. What about you? I'm still all in one piece, I think. Oh, I landed right on top of you, poor darling. Oh, good for something, anyway. Hey, what the devil was that on the stairs, anyway? Well, never mind that now. You just stay where you are. I'll go get some help. Uh-uh, Angel. We came into this place together. We're going out the same way. Here, give me a hand. Fancy seeing you, Lieutenant. Oh, I just happened to be in the neighborhood, Valentine. Couldn't resist dropping by at the office and seeing how quickly you heal. I thought you were going to stay off the merry-go-round this time, Lieutenant. Huh? Oh, well, this is just a duty call on a sick friend. Thank you very much. The abrasions are numerous but superficial. I warn you, Lieutenant, he's in a very sour mood. Yeah? Well, maybe this will cheer you up. Why, thank you, Lieutenant. You know, I've always wanted to have a piece of wire for my very own. Now, what is it? This is what was stretched across the stairs. Let me see that. After you called me, Miss Brooks, I went down to Morton Street and had a look-see. Of course, George. There was somebody in the hall. And whoever it was put the wire there while we were fussing outside Sterner's door. And I can tell you who it was. Sterner. Huh? All right, now make me believe it. Valentine, this is a special kind of wire. Very fine, very strong, and it's used almost exclusively by watchmakers. I checked. And Sterner used to be a watchmaker, George. All right, yeah, I know. And I can tell you why he wanted you out of the way. Go on, Lieutenant. This is strictly your party now. Well, here's something we all overlooked. All four of the fires down in River Flats happened on the 8th of the month, beginning with the one that got Mrs. Sterner. Lieutenant, are you trying to say that these fires are a sort of anniversary present from Sterner to the newcomer estate? Well, that's the way a firebug's mind would reason. Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. Today is the 8th of the month, too. Well, don't you see? He wants you off the scene. I take it you've questioned Sterner, Lieutenant. Yeah, yeah, and he denies everything. And we don't have enough to pin it on him. But now we'll detail an extra man to follow him. Just a minute, Lieutenant. Okay. Yeah, hello? Now, wait a minute. Who is this? Oh, yes, Miss Newcomer. One thing at a time. What does your French poodle have to do with it? What's that? Oh, I see. Yeah, okay, I'll be right there. Now, what does she want? Yeah, come on, let's have it. It seems my word happy client has had a change of heart. Now she wants me off the case. Poor 
poor darling, dear. Uh, please, Vivian, I know how attached you were to the dog. But what's done oh. is done. Exactly what has been done, Mr. Wilton. Why, that fiend. He poisoned Pierre. Now, my dear, we're not sure. But who else could it be? That Sterner's way of saying that I'll be next. Oh, what will I do about Pierre, Davis? Shall I have him cremated or, or buried in a pet cemetery? I think that he would have wanted... Yes, I'm sure he would have. Now, what's this about me? Oh, we want you to drop the case. Give him his check, Davis. Here you are, Valentine. I'm sorry. Oh, I see. Had it already, huh? Well, don't you see, Mr. Valentine? Sterner knows that I hired you. That, that's why he killed Pierre. If I don't dismiss you, I'm sure he'll do away with me. Thanks for the check. But I'm still on the case. Oh, now, really, that's young right. man. Been From here on in, I'm working for Sterner. Well, how can you work for a man who goes around killing dogs? Mrs. Sterner died in a fire that could have been prevented. Now, hold on. Do you I... think I'm stretching a point to say that the person responsible is worse than a man who killed a dog? I see we're not going to have any trouble with booby traps this time, Andrew. I bought the biggest flashlight I could find. George. Yeah? Have you any real reason to believe Sterner didn't poison that dog? No, Brooksy. It could be that Miss Newcomer or Wilton used the dog as an excuse to get me out of the picture. I might be getting too close to the... I just... George! You're a madman. Oh. I can kill you. I'll hold you to stay away from me. No! Let go of him, Beasley. Cut it out. This crazy firebug out dragging out the street by his neck. I told you to let him go, but you don't seem to understand. Oh, oh. All right. All right. Uh, uh, Beasley was in here when I opened the door. They're all against me, but I'm stronger than all of them put together. And I'll show Keep them. quiet, Sterner. What's this all about, George? Let's find out. Well, I was waiting for him here. I had enough of this nonsense. If something happens to him in here, the insurance company's going to be responsible. Well, you don't have to go about it that way, do you, Beasley? Oh, there's no use talking to this loon. All he can do is babble about me taking him away from his wife. What kind of talk is that? Look, George, I found this on the floor. Huh? This spool of wire belonged to you, Sterner? Mine? Oh, no, 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 no. I never saw it before. Okay. I don't know about you, Valentine. But I'm through coddling him. I'm going to the police and have him thrown out and kept up. No, no, no. No, no, you can't. I've got to stay here with Irene. Come on, Brooks. Come outside. I've got to stay here. George, it's cruel to leave him in there like that all alone. I'm not leaving him, Angel. But there's something I want you to do. Yeah, what's that? Get a list of all the newcomer tenements. Then drop by each one and write out a detailed description. Well, that'll take some time. Well, hop to it. I have a few things to do myself. <laughs> Valentine, you know I just can't go and lock Sterner up for the night. Find an excuse, Lieutenant. I want to prove that even with Sterner locked up, there'll still be a fire tonight as scheduled. I'm sorry, no can do. Miss Newcomer, get a warrant sworn out against Sterner for poisoning your dog. You'll want to see him in jail, don't you? And what will he do to me when he gets out? Oh, no. No, I won't. George, you're just guessing. You couldn't tell just by looking at this list. The answer to everything is right here, Angel. Tonight there's going to be a fire at 63 Ferris Street. See anybody we know going to 63? No, it's all quiet, George. Oh. Well, it's a cinch nobody can get in or out of that place without us seeing him. There's only the front entrance. And if no one shows? Someone will, Brooksy. And I'm betting it won't be Sterner. Well, I see all the lights are out in the warehouse next door. Mm -hmm. The last truck went out a few minutes ago. Empire Fabrics Corporation must be working overtime. Yeah. George. Uh -huh. Down the street, just turning the corner. Here, let's get back in the door. Oh, no. I couldn't have been in there. Couldn't have been. It's Sterner. How did he ever shake those detectives? I don't know. Well, he's going into 63, all right. Well, i got to stop it. Sterner! Wait a minute, Sterner! Uh, what, what are you doing here, Mr. Valentine? I'm asking you that. I thought you told me you were going to work tonight. Uh, I did, but I thought of something I had to do. Oh, yeah, I can imagine. Now, look Get here. Get go of me. I've got to go in here. There's something I've got to... Sterner, you... Sterner! What did he say, Stay George? here, Brooksy. I have to go in and drag him out. Oh, he wouldn't dare start a fire now that he knows we've seen it. In his frame of mind, I don't know what he'll do. I'll go with you. 
pussy. Yeah, looks like he's headed for the top. Come on. George. Get out of here, Brooksy. What you... Get over to the corner. Put in an alarm. Be careful, George. Oh, Let's be on the next floor. Johnny! 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 I gotta get to the top floor. You better get past this place. Trapped here on the top floor, but there's a window just below this one. Yes, yes, yes. I'm going to let you down outside as far as I can, then I'll swing you in. No, 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 I'm afraid. You prefer the fire? No, 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 I'll do it. Anything you say. All yes. right, now climb outside. Don't worry, I won't let you fall. Yes, but you... I'll take my chances with this drain pipe. <laughs> He'll be all right, won't he, George? Yeah, it's mostly shock, Brooksy. Once they get stunted at the hospital, he'll be okay. Oh, the way he kept mumbling about his wife. Finding an answer here tonight. Just one more errand for you, Angel, and we can call it a day. Yeah, what's that? Get hold of Lieutenant Riley and meet me at the hospital. <laughs> George, I'm so glad you got here. Mr. Sterner keeps calling for you. Oh, how is he? Oh, uh, it's pathetic. The guy thinks you can help him. He doesn't seem to realize that all you can do is land him in the state hospital for the criminally insane. How'd you make out, George? Huh? Where were you anyway, Valentine? Well, you'd call it illegal entry, Lieutenant. Here's what? a present. What's this? Allied Fire and Ingenuity Company. Amount of insurance. $800,000? Wow. Name of insured Empire Fabrics Corporation. But that's the name on the warehouse, right? Right next... next to the tenement where the fire was tonight. The idea was for both of them to burn down. But uh, go on, Lieutenant, the line on the bottom. Name of agent. What's this? Huh? huh? Edward Beasley. Yes, Beasley. The firebug who was crazy like a fox. <laughs> Yeah, it would have done your heart good, Angel, to see Beasley. Yeah, yeah, Miss Brooks. He folded right up when I shoved that policy under his nose. Well, George, just what was the racket? I don't quite understand. Well, Beasley took advantage of a tragedy. When Sterner began to hound Miss Newcomer, Beasley saw a chance to create the myth of a firebug. He knew the Empire Fabrics people were having money trouble, so he cooked up a deal to split the insurance money with them. Well, I'd say it was pretty slick if it weren't so, well, grim. Beasley uh, phoned Sterner and tricked him into showing up at number 63. If Sterner died in the fire, everybody would say the pyromaniac was caught in his own trap. No doubt about it being a professional job. It was all the fire department could do to keep the flames out of the warehouse. Then all those trucks last night, they must have been removing everything that was really valuable. Oh, Beasley didn't miss a trick. From the wire on the stairway to Miss Newcomer's French poodle. Yeah, well, while on the subject of that lady, I must remember to buy a pair of glasses. Glasses? All right, I'll play straight, man. Why? Every time she turns around, she's going to find me staring at her. Until she does something about those fire traps she owns. Say, incidentally, what's the penalty for driving someone back? <laughs> well, in this case, Miss Brooks, the biggest bouquet of roses you can buy on a cop's pay. <laughs> Now that summer is officially over, I'd like to pass along a money-saving tip for your autumn driving. Chances are your car has purred through many a cloud of road dust in the past few months, and the air cleaner under the hood may be as clogged up as a freshly used tea strainer. If that's the case, you may be wasting as much gasoline as you would be with the choke out all the time. And the fact that a dirty air cleaner lets dust and road grit mix with the gasoline is equally costly, maybe more. So, for driving economy, ask the independent Chevron gas station or the standard station to service your air cleaner tomorrow. While you're there, ask them to tell you how to get rid of grease and foreign material in the cooling system. Both of these services are speedy and inexpensive. 
And helping you maintain low-cost operation is another reason standard stations and independent Chevron gas stations say and mean we'll take better care of your car. Next week, when you tune our way for another adventure of George Valentine, you'll find George faced with a new problem and a new client. Dear Mr. Valentine, I know I must be about 18, but I may as well have been born yesterday. My mind doesn't go back any further than that. I don't know who I am or what I might have done. I'm in trouble, Mr. Valentine, so please hurry. adventure of George Valentine has been brought to you by Standard of California on behalf of independent Chevron gas stations and Standard stations throughout the West. Let George Do It stars Robert Bailey as George with Francis Robinson as Claire. Wally Mayer appears as Lieutenant Riley. Tonight's story was written by David Victor and Herbert Little Jr. and directed by Don Clark. Also heard in the cast were Howard McNear as Sterner, Sarah Selby as Vivian, Pedro de Cordoba as Wilton, and Franklin Parker is Beasley. The music is composed and conducted by Eddie Dunstetter. Your announcer, John Easton. Listen again next week. Same time, same station to Let George Do It. This is the Mutual Don Lee Broadcasting System. Welcome back. You know, I can't help but get the feeling that we're missing out on some source material. A few weeks back on Johnny Dollar, uh, there was an episode, uh, it was made about a year after this, uh, called The Little Man Who Wasn't All There. So it seems like, uh, for the title, they're referencing some common source material that we don't quite know what it is. Could be a song or a play or a movie, uh, but I can't find what it is. If anyone's aware of what they might be re referencing, I'd love to hear from you. All right, well, we have a comment from Facebook. Men says, the impatient redhead is one of my favorites. Uh, regarding that particular episode of Let George Do It. Well, thanks. That was a good episode. My... My favorites of the ones we listened to have probably been 42 on a Rope and The Perfect Specimen. And if I, had, if I picked a third, it would be uh, Cry Murder. Of course, there are some of the later ones that I like even more, some of which we won't be able to show because they're only available on the radio archives uh, set and not in general circulation. But thanks so much for the comments, and uh, I appreciate everybody supporting the show. Uh, got any comments, email me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Uh, cast your vote for the show on Podcast Alley, podcastalley.greatdetectives.net. And always feel free to give the show a call, 208-991-4783. That's 208-991-GREAT-D. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham, signing off.